equal to? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right there. Just plug it in. So you're going to find dy dx's, but if you're taking second derivative, you will have already solved for dy dx. That's cool. Now, chances are, for you guys, you might not always get it like this, all right? If, you, if the back of the book looks different than this, what they probably did, because you have complex fractions, they got rid of that y. Um, e if you wanted to get rid of it easily here, instead of finding a common denominator, just multiply everything by y, and that would get rid of it. So multiply y, multiply y, multiply y. Um, you're going to get 3y squared minus 9x squared over, nine, over y cubed. Do you see what I'm talking about? That should be the same thing as finding a common denominator. Would you mark us wrong on the test? For that? You know, I'm not sure. I have to think on that. I would like it as simple as possible. Now, sometimes you're going to get some nasty things, uh, and it would take you more time than, than that. So either I won't give you stuff that's going to be really nasty, I'll give you stuff like this that you can simplify pretty easily, or I would say just leave it. Okay? Now, I'm going to come back and answer your question here. Um, the question is, what in the world does this stuff mean? What are we doing here? Are we still finding derivatives? Yeah. And what does a derivative mean? Slope. Well, you have those words backwards, but I'll yeah. kind of show what you mean. Uh, the slope of a point? No, not really. Slope, slope of a curve. curve at a point, yes. So if I say, here's y squared minus x plus 1 equals 0. Definitely an implicit equation. Can you find the slopes of that curve at two different points? Find slopes at 2, negative 1 and 2, 1. Notice something interesting that happens. Look at this. Because I have something that's not actually a function, it's implicit, I'm plugging in the same x value and I'm actually getting out two y values. Do you see that? Also, notice that I am implicit, which means I have to give you both x and y for you to accomplish this problem because your derivative is going to be in terms of both x and y. Do you see it? So that's how you use this. Now, let's go ahead and end this problem real quick. This is a pretty easy derivative. If I derive both sides, I'm going to get ddx of the left side equals ddx of the right side. Start with the easy side. What's the derivative of 0, please? Zero. Good. Derivative of, of uh, y squared? 2 times dx. Perfect. Minus how much? 1 plus how much? Good. Derivative here is 2y dy dx. Derivative here is 1. Derivative here, nothing. Can you solve that? If you add 1, you're going to get 2y dy dx equals 1. If you divide by 2y, you get dy dx equals 1 over 2y. What did you just solve for? What is this thing? What is it? That's m. Yeah, that's it. That's slope. That's what that is. So this is a slope function. Now, it says find the slope at 2, negative 1, and 2, 1. Is there a place to plug in the x? Not even a place to plug it in. I don't even care about that. Plug in whatever values you can. If they had both x's and y's, you'd plug in both x's and y's. If it has only x's, plug in x's. If it has y's, plug in y's. So what we're trying to find is a slope at 2, negative 1, 2. For 2, negative 1, I would have 1 over 2 times negative 1. For 2, 1, I'd have 1 over 2 times 1. This one gives me negative 1 half. This gives me positive 1 half. Interestingly, here's what we've done. We found the slope of that thing 
at the two points, so two different slopes because we're going to have two different outputs for that same input. Interesting question. How many people understood what we talked about so far today? Okay. Uh, I'm going to start you off next time with quite a brain buster. Um, after that, we're done. There, there's really only one more problem that we have to do. So I want to show you a couple things about that. Now, um, we'll start on that next time. All right, so today, like I said, we're going to continue talking about implicit differentiation. That's what we're doing. We're still finding a derivative, but we're realizing that we can take this implicitly. So if we can't solve our function for y like that, which this is actually an equation, not a function, but if we can't solve it for y, that's called implicit. So this is definitely an implicit equation. We're going to be able to find the derivative, which still means slope, of that thing. So here's the question. The question is not just this, but can you, with this equation, find the, the tangent line at a certain point. Find the equation of the tangent line at the point 2, 1. By the way, with something like this, uh, could I just say at x equals Three or x equals two. Could I have done that here? No. Not really. If you can't solve for y, because you, you, if, even if I plugged in the the two, you'd have a, a bear of a time finding out what the y would be. Does that make sense? So really, with these implicit ones, they're going to give you the full point. Uh, and we're going to see that for the derivative as well. So let's go ahead and let's find the equation of a tangent line at that point. What do you need to do to find the equation of a tangent line? Good, because for any line, you need two things. What are the two things you need to find the equation of a line? Slope. slope and a point. We have a point. We now just need a slope. A slope is a derivative. So we're going to go through this. I want your help with it, but I'm going to do it on the board for the sake of time, just so you see it one more time. I'm, the implicit stuff, I've already taught you how to do all that. So right now, it's really just practice for you. Uh, and, and one thing you're going to see up here that's very important as far as our signs go. So with the implicit di uh, differentiation, it says you take a derivative, d dx, of both sides, and we treat y as a function of x. What that means is y is a function in terms of x that we just don't happen to know. So if we're taking this with respect to the variable x, and y is a function of x, we're going to get a dy dx every time we touch a y with a derivative. Does that make sense to you? So we're going to be getting that. So in our case, well, here's all the work shown for you. We're going to take a derivative of both sides. Even though that's a 0, I'm still going to show the derivative just for the sake of, well, being correct. And so you don't forget that even if it's a constant or something, you still have to take a derivative of that. So we're taking a derivative of both sides. Of course, a derivative of 0 is still 0, so we're good on that. Now, let's look real careful at these pieces over here. Uh, is this a hard derivative to take, the 4x to the 4th? What's a derivative of 4x to the 4th? Okay, so let's do that. So we got that, that derivative. How about this one? Is this one different for us? That's a product rule. Why is it a product rule? You have one term in, in terms of x multiplied by another function. Sure. So this is a function in terms of x right there. That is an x. Now, we said y is a function of x as well. So every time you get that, you do need product rule. Or if you had a fraction, you would need the quotient rule. So you have to have that. So in our case right here, we do have a plus. So we write a plus. Now, there's a couple things you can do with that 8. You can treat it as 8x squared. That's one term. Or you could pull the 8, since that's a constant, you could pull that out front. That really wouldn't matter. Now, you're probably going to be distributing that anyway, so leave it in there with the 8x squared. That's fine. Uh, but you could, you could pull that out. Do you see what I'm talking about? That's possible. So here, I'll just treat it as 8x squared. That seems to work okay for me. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. By the way, note that even when I'm taking a derivative of y, I still have a d dx. Do you guys see that I still have the dx? You can't go switching variables. So if you, have, if you start with the d dx, it's got to be that all the way through. All right? So that's, that's there no matter what. Still OK so far? 
So we've just done the product rule. And you know what I'm going to do? Since this piece was right here, just for, you see this, why I do this in the next one, just for the sake of uh, being, uh, have a con continue continuity in the way I'm going to do things here, I'm going to put a big bracket around that. That's saying this came from that one term, and that's a great thing to do. The reason why it's a great thing to do, you're going to see this in the next piece. If you do, if you do this here, it really doesn't matter, because that positive isn't going to change any signs. You see what I'm saying? However, what's going to happen if I don't do that with this one? I'm going to really blow my problem up. Okay, that's going to explode my problem because the sign is going to be incorrect. You're going to see that right here. Let's look at the next term. I have a minus sign, so I'll write a minus. 25x squared y. That's still a product rule. Product rule says maybe take the 25 with the x squared. D dx of x squared. That's the derivative of the first. Sorry. Derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second and I want you to see something. Now when this said take the derivative of this piece it means I'm going to subtract the derivative of that piece. The derivative of this piece isn't just this thing, is it? It's the whole thing. So if you don't have a big bracket right here, that sign's incorrect, right? If you do have a big bracket right there, that's saying that what's going to happen is this negative is going to change those signs in there, and that would be the correct way to do it. How many people see that? Okay, that's an important thing. That's actually why we did this example, just, just so you can see that. Otherwise, you're going to be off by a sign somewhere. And then, that's a good place for a plus. Uh, plus, let's do this piece. What's that piece? Okay, I'll give you a 16y cubed. Do we need a dy dx on that? Yeah. Every time you touch a y with a derivative, you have to have a dy dx on account of what rule was that that did that? General power rule, general power rule or in general? The chain, mm -hmm. the chain rule. That's right. The chain rule says that. <coughs> Equals zero. Now that's a long problem. Did you think you'd ever get a problem that long? That's ridiculous, isn't it? It's like a whole piece of paper right there. Are you okay on what we've done so far? So we've done real easy one, no problem. Product rule, product rule, a dy dx because we're touching a y with a derivative, and then we have zero. Yes, no? Now we start following the ddx. This is why I've made you write the ddx on your problems because it will tell you what to do next. It says this piece is done. You're just going to have the 16 x cubed plus. Now this piece in here, this just says do this ddx. So uh, everyone, 8x squared, what's the derivative of that? And then it's y squared. Notice there's no dy dx because I, I don't need one here. This is just uh, the derivative of x. Plus, I'm getting rid of my bracket because I know none of those signs are going to change. Everything was positive, that's okay. So this plus doesn't change anything here. That's where those brackets are disappearing to. Then plus, I have 8x squared. Uh, tell me the derivative of y squared, please, when I'm taking a derivative with respect to x. What is that? 2y dy over dx. Good. 2y, but not just 2y, right? If I, do t if I just do 2y, you know what happens? If I do this, and I forget a dy dx, what's going to happen is you're going to be adding or subtracting this term over instead of dividing by that term because you factored out a dy dx. Do you see the, the difference there? That's going to really make that ending fraction, which we're probably going to get, look really weird. So it's really important to get that dy dx because that gives you another term that you're going to factor dy dx out of. 